we'll uh, roll the engine over here and try not to tip it over in the yard. Hi hey everybody, Clinton here with Oval Window Racing. And uh, today, I'm gonna try to do a short video and uh, just kind of introduce you to the uh, new project. This is a friend's uh, engine here. This is uh, out of a uh, dune buggy, or as I like to call them, sand rails, uh, because you can see <laughs> all the sand. And basically, uh, why I've got it out here in the yard is because I'm gonna try to blow as much of Silver Lake off of this thing as I can before I go and start um, disassembling it and uh, putting it in the parts washer because I don't want to fill my parts washer up with sand if I don't have to. And it's best to get most of the stuff outside so you're not getting it into your parts and having to worry about uh, um, them staying in the parts, you know, in case you miss cleaning them or something. I don't normally uh, take on too many projects um, from other people, uh, basically because uh, you guys know how busy I am with Simon and now Hubert. <laughs> But Brian here um, is a friend, and uh, this is actually an engine I built, he's telling me, 18 years ago. I thought it was more like, you know, 10 to 12 years ago, but he says, no, I've got pictures of it, and he believes I originally built this engine back in 2002. And uh, he's actually so impressed with it that uh, he's hoping that he can get another 20 years out of another rebuild. Uh, trying to tell him that I think that maybe I just got lucky. <laughs> Surprisingly, it has lasted. Um, it is, like I said, out of a sand rail. When they're going up the Silver Lake and doing the sand dunes, you know, they're they're on these little things uh, going up and down the hills. And uh, he was really hoping to get some action in this year, but he had uh, a little bit of an issue. <laughs> he says it sat for uh, several years, and uh, he got it running again. You know. Kind of like me, you know, life takes its roles and you have kids and stuff, but uh, now he's hoping to be able to enjoy um, the sand rail with the kids. But in the process of uh, of running it and testing it out, uh, he had a little mishap, and I'm going to show you what that was. <laughs> we'll uh, roll the engine over here and try not to tip it over in the yard. Like I said, try not to tip it over in the yard. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Gonna have to hold on to it. Good thing I had that long stinger on there, but uh, yeah, this is what happens when you decide to set your sand rail down on the engine. <laughs> Actually, I think there is a little bit of water rod in here too. And uh, that happened when it was sitting Sometimes these uh, carbs and stingers will allow a little bit of water in and they wind up in the oil sump and things get brittle. But Brian was saying that he uh, actually lost one of his rear tires in the sand rail sat down on the uh, asphalt that he was driving around in and all the oil came out of it. I guess that's a quick way to do an oil change. Let's try to get this thing back up without uh, tipping it back over again. Yeah, so if you see Brian, don't tell him I tipped his engine over. Yeah, Brian's gonna re be replacing this uh, <laughs> this header anyways. It's kind of seen its days. You can see it's uh, a little rusty and stuff, but the reason, like I said, it's out here, I wanna blow as much of this loose sand off. What we do have over here, this here is the uh, candidate for the uh, replacement. I did a once over on it spun around, took a good look at it. Something I've been um, kicking around the garage for uh, several years. I've been meaning to want to do a build on it. And uh, I guess now is the perfect opportunity. But yeah, it's kind of my stash and I don't really like uh, giving my stash away if I don't have to. But uh, like I said, Brian's a good friend and obviously a loyal customer. <laughs> so I've been kicking it around the garage, sitting underneath the well, some of this is probably from my manifolds I just match ported. I did a kind of a visual scan on it. One of the things uh, I always look for, and I'm going to be doing a build, especially a high performance build, this is what they call a dual oil relief. And you can identify that by this big screw here 
and the big screw in the back. And uh, these are generally uh, dual port engines. But you know, there have been some single port engines built into dual port engines, so you always gotta look for those. The other thing that would have been nice, is it would have had eight millimeter uh, um, head nuts or head studs instead of 10 millimeter because uh, eight millimeter would have had a uh, case saver so it was going to cost a little bit more because I always like to have case savers installed and then number three which this is number one I always have uh, actually it looks like this may have been a deep stud with a 10 millimeter so I don't see any threads here they're down deeper but that was something that Volkswagen did to help keep it from uh, cracking in the back here I did kind of look back here and I didn't see any cracks back there so just a quick visual and of course we've got a place to bolt a deep sump to and it looks really solid maybe I shouldn't be giving Brian my good stuff <laughs> yep so that's about it for today just kind of want to give you guys an update on my, my, one of my next projects uh, don't worry I do have more uh, more engine cases <laughs> Um, not a whole lot more. They are getting a little harder to find these days, but uh, I do need to at least save one because Hubert's going to need a, a case too for when we start building up Emily's engine. I've been collecting parts for hers, and that'll probably be a future build, but this will be the next build. Um, Simon's about um, going to be going down into storage here pretty soon. Got about another week or two weeks here of this nice, beautiful weather. We're heading into fall here in Michigan, and uh, I've got a lot, a lot of things happening this month, so I think I'm going to probably put Simon up. Don't tell him. Hopefully he's not hearing me. Uh, up a little early for his hibernation. <laughs> but yeah, if you uh, want to see more of this build, be sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell um, so you can get updated every time I drop a video. And uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> Yeah, there they finish up. I think I got more sand on me than I got on the ground. Actually, I've seen worse. This isn't too bad. But uh, as I'm finishing up here, let's turn that hissing noise off. I uh, realize I haven't told you guys the specs on this, and you're probably wondering what the specs on this engine is. Uh, well, I'm only going by memory because <laughs> I lost my book. I used to have a book. Every time I build an engine, you know, I would write down all the specs, you know, everything from, uh, you know, piston weight, rod weight, deck height, you know, whatever the compression ratio wind up being, you know, CC of the heads. And, you know, and I always jot down the uh, serial number, which is going to be found uh, right down here. There's a number on the case that identifies it. I lost it. You know, I think I had about 20, possibly 20 or 25 engines in that uh, book, and one of them was this one. <laughs> I think I had my engine in there five or six times. And uh, But I'm going to go by memory. I'm pretty sure that Brian's was a 2276, or some people call it a 2275cc engine. Um, that's 82 millimeter crank with 94 millimeter pistons. I don't really remember what cam's in it. Uh, he remembers, I told him, probably run a mix between racing fuel and uh, 91 octane, which would be about, you know, 105 octane. So it means it probably got the compression up to roughly 10 to 1. It's got a 48 millimeter IDFs. Uh, yes, I said that correctly. 48 millimeter IDFs. When I built Brian's and his friend's engine, they actually offered these IDFs, these 48 millimeter IDFs, brand new at the time, and we won't wind up buying two sets for them. They didn't want to cough up the uh, extra money for the IDAs. And you know, the, the IDFs do fit more compact. ID, um, IDAs would have an air cleaner would stick way up here. And of course, manifolds and stuff. But yeah, that's uh, what I'm remem remembering on the specs. He actually runs, I'll show this to you. you see that in there? It's a really, really, really lightweight flywheel. Um, it's probably uh, 10, 8 or 10 pounds. It says this engine revs up really quickly. But yeah, when I get going in and uh, tearing it down and stuff, uh, we'll know for sure what um, it actually is. But yeah, better uh, call it. Um, it's kind of wanting to drizzle out here <laughs> in rain. So better get the, this, the cameras and the engine in before we get too much more rain. So as always, keep shifting those gears, keep cruising, and always enjoy the ride. We'll catch you guys later. I was just another guy.